Hey, it's Will Erickson from MomentumGroup.tech. I have a short video about schedule an API workflow on a list. Um, lists are a great thing in Bubble, but when you're starting out, it can be a little bit confusing. And so it's really awesome to just work through an example to see this in action. Um, when would you use this workflow action? You would use it when you need to send a list of something like individual emails or notifications, um, or maybe you're creating a new account and you need to create some data for that user. You need to create a list of data. Um, also, maybe you are calling an external API. It's returning a list in a JSON object and you need to process each item on that list um, and create individual rows in bubble. So these are some scenarios where you might use schedule an API workflow on a list. So let's have a look at how to do this in an app. I just took someone through a basic process to do this yesterday. So I'm just going to re go through that example. So what I did was, first of all, I went to settings, I went to API and I said, enable workflow API and backend workflows, click perfect. And that will um, basically enable you to go and look at the backend workflows here. So I'll go do that now. What I did was I clicked here and I said, create a new API workflow uh, and then in this case, the API workflow is sending, an a, sending a payment reminder. So we're going to name it with an appropriate name. Um, I deselected public. I don't need this to be public. It's only within my app. Um, I deselected that. It's maybe not too relevant if it's not public, but um, we still need to think about that. And I'm just going to ignore privacy rules. Again, probably doesn't matter too much. Um, you just got to think about your scenario here. What I did was I created a parameter. So um, a parameter in your API workflow. So these API workflows run on the back end, and you can pass in pieces of information that you're going to need in your workflow. So I've just created a, a, a parameter called user, and I've set the data type to that of a user. So now I can use this within my API workflow. So the second thing I did was I came in and I set up my send email action. And I just said, okay, so I'm going to choose the user's email. Yep. So I'm going to specify, here's a user. Let's send them an email. And subject, hey, user's email, please pay user's amount owing, format as number, Let's format that as currency. And then, you know, you could populate in a dynamic link or something here if you wanted to, or a static link. So that's it. When we call this API workflow from within our app, it's going to send an email to this user and it's going to say, hey, email, please pay dollar sign. Awesome. So that's the back end part. Now on the front end, what I've done is I've got myself a button. So I've just dragged a button onto the bubble um, editor canvas here. I'll delete that one. I've called it send payment reminders. I've just changed the name and then I've just clicked in the send start edit workflow button. And what I've done here is I've got one step. I've gone down and I've chosen schedule an API workflow on a list. Okay. And what I've done is I've selected the type of thing user, because in this case, I'm going to go through my users, but you could make this anything. You can make this orders. You could make it payments. You could make it um, whatever data type you have. So I've done a search for users and I've just said, just give me all the users where the amount owing is greater than zero. So I'm going to exclude everyone that doesn't owe any money. I've chosen, chosen my workflow. I've just set the schedule date as now. So you, you can schedule these for later, um, but I would, in this case, just send it straight away when they press the button. Okay, you can specify an interval. You can specify no privacy rules. So I haven't worried. Um, I've just said user is this user. Now, this is an important one. So this is a bit confusing, but what this this means, this user, this product, this order, it just takes the type, the list that you're returning, and it says, okay, let's go through them one by one and let's send in that one row individually into that workflow and then send out that email. So that's why I use that this user. To make this work, I've just created some dummy data. So I've gone into my users, I've just got a new entry, amount owing email, and I've just created Will Erickson plus test.1 at momentum one, Will Erickson test.2 at momentum five, Will Erickson test.3 at 
test three and momentum five. So I've got three users and a amount owing each. And then in my privacy rules, just to make this work, I've just enabled this. Now, this is something that I'm just doing for the purpose of this example, but I've just enabled this to work. Um, usually you would not enable these permissions on your user because it's exposing that user table to the world. Um, but you would have appropriate privacy rule settings relevant for that data type. Okay, so, so I've created an API endpoint that's going to process one record. I've created a button that's going to get the list and it's going to send the list one at a time into that API endpoint using the this user um, statement. Oops, and then we're going to test it. So let's go preview, preview mode. Um, no, it's a name, password. Of course, it doesn't work when I'm making a video. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Let's go have a look. General username and password. That's exactly what I've just typed in 10 times. So why is it not working? Okay, it's just worked. So I've got my button. So on my list of testing, I basically say, go into preview mode, um, press the button, but we're gonna use step-by-step -step in the debugger. So we'll click on step-by-step -step and that will just let us go and see what's happening one, one action at a time. So button, send payment reminder is clicked, run next. Schedule an API workflow, send payment reminder on a list. So I can go and see all the parameters I'm passing in. So I'm passing in this list here and I've got user one, Mount owing one, will test one, user two, amount owing five, will test two, user three, amount owing five, will test three. Awesome. So I'm going to hit run next. Now, the thing here is you can't see what's happening from the front end because it's just passed it off to the back end. And this debugger only really shows you what's happening in the front end. So, what we can do now is we can go have a look at the logs and see what happened. So let's have a look at the logs. I'll just go two minutes ago, that should be fine. Hit the search button. Let's have a look. Button A is clicked. Yep, that'll be me. Start a running workflow. Okay, schedule an API workflow, send payment reminder on a list. Yep, list to run on. Here's one ID number one, here's ID number two, here's ID number three. Awesome, so I've got my list of three items scheduled for now. Um, Start a running workflow, event condition passed, send email one, will Ericsson test one? Please pay $1, click here. Send email, will Ericsson test two? Payment reminder, will Ericsson test two? Please pay $5. And will Ericsson test three? Please pay $5. Now, what's quite interesting about this, um, Let's go see my email as well. Let's have a look. Okay, show. So I've got my, please pay $5, please pay $1, please pay $5. What's interesting about this is these are not in the order that I sent them out. Um, and that's another really good point. So this is working, but it hasn't gone in, uh, procedural way. So it hasn't gone one, two, three. It seems like it's gone one, three, two. Um, and it's a really important thing to consider in, in these things. Um, so the timing can be not how you expect when you use schedule API workflow on a list because you're sending those things to the back end and it's going to process them when it's ready, but it's not going to necessarily do them in any particular order. Um, and you don't know the timing. So that some of them might be delayed by a few seconds. They might go more quickly. You don't have any control over that. And you can't see when those when those steps are done. So that's just something to consider about the timing of uh, schedule API work on the list. Um, the other thing is it's really good for short 
list, say two to ten things. Uh, but you you really need to think carefully about how this will scale. So if you if you made your workflow more complex than what I've just done, um, especially if you're doing like creating more items off that one, um, then your solution will may may max out your app's capacity quite quickly. Um, so you need to think about what would happen if you ran um, <clears throat> if you had this running and there was a lot a lot of uh, records being generated. Uh, will that work? You also need to consider what would happen if multiple users ran this solution concurrently. So you've got um, people running, um, many people could be using your app, they could be pressing that button. And what happens if 10 people all press it at once? Will it be able to handle that, that spike in activity? So for really long lists or where multiple users are using uh, the app concurrently and running these workflows, then I, there's a couple of recommendations I would make. And that is, uh, first of all, consider using a recursive workflow. So that's one where you basically create a loop, you process one entry, and then you schedule it again to process the next entry and so on and so on. Um, another strategy which you could use in conjunction with a recursive workflow or separate to it is to have another data type which controls that list. So you basically save that list onto a row of data and then you process through each item in that list and you move it from a list of items to process into a list of items that have been processed. Um, and then you can also only be processing one of those um, one of those rows at a time. So you can force the app to slow down and just to, just to basically um, keep its capacity usage constant so it never, it never allows a spike in activity beyond a certain level. So that's, that's some of the strategies we would use to kind of queue those tasks and then uh, just run them one at a time rather than um, having, oh, basically allowing the users of your app to concurrently um, push the app to max capacity. Uh, right now, Bubble does not have an auto scaling option. They were looking at introducing one last year and some of the issue with their pricing model um, slowed that down. So uh, until they do have that, uh, I think, we need to be very, very careful about how these things scale. So that's something to think about as well. So in, in conclusion, um, think about timing and think about how it will scale. And I would only really be using this for short lists that uh, are not likely to push your app over capacity. So that's a, a rundown on scheduling API workflow on a list. Um, we go into this topic and many other topics in much greater detail in our Academy program. So please, um, yeah, jump onto our website and check that out. Hope to see you there.